What's up YouTube, Official Gaming Network, and welcome to episode 38 of our Mario Game in Java tutorial. Last episode we implemented um, sounds into our game. This episode we're going to be implementing a background image, and we will be optimizing our game just to make it a little bit better. So, if you didn't check out my vlog I made early today, then go check it out. The uh, link is in the description below. And uh, I forgot to mention in the vlog that when I release the final episode of this series, I will be releasing the source code for educational purposes, but uh, not for distribution, so just don't go around saying, oh, look at me, it's my source code, because this channel, this channel pretty much uh, proves that it's actually my source code. So yeah, let's just get right into the tutorial. Oh, by the way, I don't have webcam on today because uh, it looks like crap. <laughs> I'm being serious, I'm recording this in the night and I don't know, it just looks really blurry and it's like lagging out my computer for whatever reason. I don't know, I'm just not using the webcam. So if we look at our res, then you can see we ha I made a, well I didn't make a copy from the internet, a background.png image and that'll be our background image. So we'll go to our game class and under private static buffered image levels, we're going to create a single private static buffered image and we're going to call it backgrounds and then go into our init method and in this try catch method we're going to set back oh my god backgrounds equal to image io dot reads get class dot get resource yeah you guys probably remember this like because we've done it lots of times before so slash background dot png and all we have to do to set the background of our image is um, we have to replace these two lines of code. Whoa, you see that? My mouse just got... Yeah, yeah, what was that? <laughs> that was funny. I don't know why that happens. So, yeah, we've got to replace these two lines of code with g.drawImage. So first is our background. Then the x and y coordinates of our image will be 0 and 0. Now, make sure that you type get width and get height because something really really weird happens if we just type width and height referring to our uh referring to the ints in our game class so i actually have no idea why this happens but let me just show you what happens if we just type width and height on its own it looks really weird <laughs> all right so first this comes up like the launch is still there then everything just goes <laughs> All glitchy. I have no idea why this happens. I was just playing around with this then. I saw this come up. I don't know. <laughs> so even the launcher background is still there. I don't know why this happens. This is crazy. <laughs> Alright, so make sure you type get width and get height because that solves the problem. So if we run it now then you know it appears like normal you can see our background image and uh yeah there we go so the thing is as you saw when we clicked start game and it showed our lives it showed the background image in front of uh our lives counter and i don't know about you you can keep it like that if you want but i personally prefer the back the black backgrounds when showing the uh, how many amount of lives we have and then when it actually plays the game then show the background image so yeah that's what i'm gonna do right now make it black on the uh lives counter and uh you know just keep showing the background image like normal when we're playing the game so to do that we're going to copy this line of code or cut it and we're going to paste it into our if show death screen is equal to false if statement and make sure to paste it at the top and in our else statement also at the top of this else statement we're going to do what we did before to make the black background, just set the color to black and then g dot fill rec zero zero get width and get height. So if we run this now, then it should work fine. So yeah you can see there's a black back see the mouse enlargening again. <laughs> and then I'll uh, just our backgrounds for <laughs> I don't know, I keep getting distracted by this large mouse, like, like when I spin it around, it just goes really big all of a sudden. 
it might have something to do with my computer's system preferences. I don't know. I have a look at it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's two things I want to fix up in this game. It's not really... Well, one of them is a bug or one of them is just uh, a graphical glitch sort of thing. And the first one you can see is that if you look at our coin counter here, you can see our... Uh, Oh my god, I cannot talk today. You can see that the, the thing to represent the coins is a, just a yellow square instead of the actual coin texture. And uh, the tiles actually go over it instead of it going over the tiles, which we want. Because, you know, if our coin meter is there and we want to read it, well, it uh, will be a bit trickier to read it because our tiles will be covering it. And the next, and the next thing I want to clear up is that when we collide... Uh, when our right rectangle of our player collides with another block and it does this, it like teleports us back. So I'm going to solve this issue first because it is a lot quicker to solve. So to solve this issue, we simply go into our player class and then scroll to our player's tick method and then in our, and then in our for loop where we're checking, where we're checking through uh, the tile linked list in our handler class, Go to if get bounds left dot intersects t dot get bounds and get dot get bounds right etc. And all you have to do is replace t dot width with width, which is referring to our player's width. So t dot get x minus width and t dot get x plus width, not t dot get x plus t dot width. And the reason for this is because when we collide it with our block, it should set our x to our uh, block's x position minus our player's width, so it looks like we're running into it but because our players width is less than the blocks width uh, the code pretty much teleports us a little bit too far than it needs to uh, I hope you understand that if not just then just comment in the comment section below I'll be happy to explain it in a bit more detail so yeah just hop over our Goomba oh yeah I fixed the sounds by the way like I added in all the correct sounds so yeah you can see there's no uh, glitching error anymore so yeah, now onto the next problem, which is this coin thing. All right. So pretty much what we need to do is render our uh, coin counter on top of all the entities and tiles inside of our game. So to do that, we have to go into our handler class, and we pretty much have to render our coin counter on top of all of this. So all of these, our entities and tiles will get rendered first. And then after that, we're going to call the code which will render our coins. And because we're rendering our coin counter after, it will render on top of the already rendered entities and tiles. So yeah, go back to our game class and inside a render method in the show death screen if statement, select all the code instead of the uh, g.draw image uh, where we draw our background. And pretty much paste it into our handler class after all the for loops in the handler's render method and uh, there you go it, sh it works but not quite and uh, let me just show you uh, how it doesn't quite work so you can see our coin counter is there but it's stuck in one position and it's not really following our like screen it's not really sticking to our screen like it did before now the reason of this why is uh I'm going to talk about something called screen positions and map positions. Now let me just bring up uh, GIMP just to quickly show you this. So I quickly drew up a little fake level here. You can see like there's uh, some platformers, there's a background, there's some coins, all that stuff. Now I'm going to talk about what is called map positions or the difference between map positions and screen positions. I'm not sure if you really call them that way. That's just how I'm going to call them. So our map position is a position where the object is on the map. Let's say this coin right here. Oh, well, this is a really bad arrow. Let's say this coin right here has a position of x equals to 100 and y is equal to 200. And uh, that means on the map, uh, this coin will stay in this exact same position uh, where, wherever our player goes. So... You know, if our player goes off to the far right of the map, uh, this coin will stay in the exact same position because, you know, that's where our game told its position to be. 
So now I'm going to talk about screen positions. And a screen position is pretty much a position relative to the screen. So let me just draw out a quick screen here. Let's, let's find a color, this gray color. Now let's say this is our screen. Now what our screen is, is that everything inside the screen is what we can see. So if we were playing this level, then we could only see what was inside of this box. Everything else outside of the box we would not be able to see. So let's say uh, a screen position of... Now let's say a screen position here is x equals to 20 and y equals to 20. Now the difference is between a screen position and the map position is that this screen position always stays in the exact same place wherever the screen goes. So let's say I draw another screen here and uh, let's say this is the exact same x equals 20, y equals 20 position uh, on this screen. That position will be in the exact same place relative to the screen. Now the way we are actually drawing our coin counter right now is that we are you know, setting its x and y coordinates as a map position. We need to set it as a screen position so it is relative to the screen and follows our screen wherever it goes. So yeah, that was a bit of a in-depth explanation of screen and uh, map positions. So to set this equal to screen positions, what we need to do is that we need to type in g.fillrect Actually, we don't. Let's just take this code out altogether because first we need to draw our coin image. So we'll type game dot coin dot get buffered image. Now we're going to uh, uh, draw the. Now we're going to set the uh, position of the coin. Now to set the screen position, what we have to do is that remember that rectangle we made in our uh, game class get visible bounds is pretty much a rectangle showing our visible bounds or what we can see. What we need to type is game dot get visible area plus 20 and that will be our x. So because our visible area is pretty much our screen, the x position of the image will pretty much be where our screen starts and 20 pixels over to the right so you'll stay relative to the screen this whole time. So our y position will be game dot get visible area plus 20 as well and the width and height will be 75 and 75 oh yeah we have to do game dot get visible area dot x because we want to get the x component of our uh game our of our vis oh my god i cannot talk because we want to get the current x and y position of our visible area and to finish it off we have to type null and we can do that for our g dot draw string as well so just type game dot get visible area dot x plus a hundred and game dot get visible area dot y plus ninety-five. So yeah that should do it. So if we run our game as you can see our coin counter stays on our screen wherever it goes and uh, this time it is uh being drawn on top of the tiles unlike before where it was being drawn over the tiles. So yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up our um, uh, video tutorial. Uh, sorry I haven't made a video in a while. Uh, why I haven't been making videos in a while, it was explained on the vlog, which is linked in the description. And from now on, I'm going to release videos once a week of this series until the series is concluded, which will be between episode 40 and 45. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, share this video, it will help me out a lot, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.